A week earlier, we had three days of crisp, clear weather. The type of days where the air grabs your psyche and the boundaries between yourself and the world are thinned. The air itself becomes a place of beauty, a place filled with more possibilities just beyond your grasp. Yet it's there. It's more than a feeling. It's other than visceral. It's more than a feeling. Beyond, it's other than visceral. Beyond, yet a part of this world. It is this air, this effect, this reality that hints at what is possible if we but listen to what is around us, if we but open to what is around us. Heaven is here, you know, that we live in paradise. And hell is here too because of what we're doing and just our blindness, we forget. You know, we forget we're, we're in paradise, so that's sort of like hell. And the purgatory is, is that we're just sort of constantly fluctuating back and forth between this. It was about realizing that we're in heaven. You know, it's really making that choice, where if we're sort of unconscious, then we just sort of swim around in, in all three of these concepts of hell, purgatory, and heaven. Go out there and look at what's around us and try to then see where the beauty exists and where conflicts and suffering exist and then start working with those in a way that that alleviates that softens the suffering being a buddhist you know i feel all all is suffering and that was really hard one for me for a long time being in the beauty and the joy of being a human it was hard for me to conceive that it was constant suffering it's not that we get rid of suffering or we we prevent the suffering but rather that our awareness is more towards the divine. It's more engaged in the reality of creating beauty. Permaculture is this tool by which we can, one, come to an understanding of what is around us. Where is the suffering? Where are the problems? And uh, what is the things that are not quite, that are degenerative, the things that are breaking down? Permaculture then gives us that ability to assess and understand this and then practical ways we can take steps to move towards this creation of beauty, this creation of, of a harmonious uh, environment in which we as humans are a functional part of, that we feed the environment and the environment feeds us. And in that sense, that's, that's what heaven is to me. And if you really under, you know, grasp permaculture, you really grasp it, then it's a process of, of attaining heaven here. It's a process of realizing that we're actually in heaven right at this moment. Between Bhutan, Nepal, and China is a region of northern India known to the indigenous people simply as paradise. Gangtok is its formal name, the capital of Sikkim, and gateway to the majestic Himalayas, where Rico Zook and I meet up for a two-month journey throughout India. With Rico as guide, I followed close behind while he taught and collaborated with farmers, villagers, and indigenous people on sustainable solutions that regard both human beings and the earth equally, and with any luck, glimpse the possibility for heaven on earth. Rico has been instructing permaculture to NGOs and students all across India for the past four years. Rico, though unknown to most, is becoming a leading permaculture teacher who consults with NGOs and landowners to bring them together to create sustainable communities throughout rural India and parts of Nepal. His work with NGOs and landowners alike seeks to find alternative models of agriculture and ecotourism. Nice handmade local, natural, we'll see lots of bamboo. And Look at these great seed trays. There's amazing, nice ceramic, local clay, nice, beautiful seed trays. Experimenting with the jungle garden or forest garden, where you have the citrus, you have banana, turmeric, ginger. Oh yes, here you see, doing sheath mulching, paper, Sheet mulching, first time. Vermi compost, worm compost, which is like in compost world, that's the gold standard. And so here they used rocks with some cement to put an in-ground one. Here in Sikkim, 
often people are considered very economically poor. They don't have much money. But if you really look at the food they have, the environment they're in, the extended family they have, that this is actually very much a very good life, a very rich and fulfilling life. I mean, this idea of heaven on earth. On a bone-jarring jeep ride, we make our way south to Darjeeling, India, sneaking across a treacherous but breathtaking mountain pass. We are headed to a small tea co-op in a local hamlet, which is buzzing with excitement over the arrival of electricity, though it is only a short 10 kilometers distance from Darjeeling, complete with electrical power, cell phones, and internet cafes. As globalization's footprint widens, extending out to pristine places such as this one, it is a unique opportunity for us to observe firsthand what impact modernization has on a culture, its people, and the earth. Darjeeling is very internationally known. It's anywhere from a hundred to a few hundred thousand people live there. It's an international center where many foreigners come and then uh, spread out into the Himalaya foothills, a very big commercial tourist uh, hub. During the 1970s, Bill Mollison and David Holmgren created the concept of permaculture. Permaculture literally means permanent agriculture or permanent culture. 30 years later, permaculture has evolved into a complex system that regards the essential interconnectedness of all things, plants, animals, humans, and the earth. Nothing is separate. What I teach and talk about is called permaculture, but it's really sustainability, creating a sustainable... This is called permaculture. So, we're here below Darjeeling, and if you look up, you can see Darjeeling behind us through the trees. So this is a little bit more complex. Permaculture uses a set of guiding principles which act like threads in a beautifully patterned design. Principles such as flow, pattern, sector analysis, and zonation. For example, a farmer might use flow to understand how the movement of resources through the farm, such as seed, water, manure, and labor, create a dynamic pattern that tacitly recognizes the whole as something far greater than the sum this of is its one of parts. The great things I've really that just first impressed me when I got here was the way they set up their cow shed. They have here's the cows, and then there's a slight mm -hmm. slope to the floor. And this one, they don't always do this, but a lot of them do this, where they have a channel that then comes out, and you can see it flows over into here, into a, a cement tank, a small cement tank that holds the urine. Also, you know, is mixed in with the, the dung somewhat. But then the, the cow manure goes over the side here, and here they have mulch and some other leftover um, fodder that they mix in with it so it's all ready to go and it's just a real nice just relationship of going down slope and then here's the compost being already made just outside the, the cow shed. And quite often you see these then that the fields are below them if the house is situated such on the land that uh, I've seen it where it's been the jungle where they collect the fodder coming down to the cow shed and the cow shed urine manure into making compost straight out there and then the fields are right down slope so you have a really nice just natural flow of resources down into the field. Pretty amazing, really great.
through our awareness of these flows and patterns and how each principle is interconnected, permaculture teaches good stewardship of the earth seeking to work in harmony with nature. Permaculture isn't this science that you have to study for a long time, that often if you're just aware and you build on a traditional culture and you have this sort of attunement to how nature works, that it naturally happens to some level, to some degree. They're doing organic, but just not that. It's even beyond that with just how mixed and complex the planting is. It's truly a, a jungle food production system here. Uh, and many, many different products. To fodder, to fuel, to food, to forage, to medicines, timber, craft material. A larger picture, what's going on? How does this community relate to Darjeeling, to its market? How does this community and cropping, um, with uh, their interest in tourism here, also as an educational place to come and show uh, other folks, other farmers in the areas, different ways in which they can grow. So I think that's really what we're looking at here. So part of what this community and the NGO, uh, DLR Prerna, that I work with is looking at is this idea of sustainable tourism. And the idea there is we want to allow people to come here and see what's going on and witness and actually assist and be a part of this process of creating some sustainability, but in a way that feeds a community and maintains cultural traditions and bounds here. Dal, which is the bean. They just put a bamboo pole in the ground, plant the bean, the dal, and it grows up. And so they'll grow them in different spots. They'll grow some here, and then next year they'll be grown someplace else for the, you know, nitrogen fixing quality. It's real nice. Beautiful terraces. It's full engagement in a way that creates beauty, that is part of the beauty. I mean, that's to me what really permaculture is a tool for. What first started out as a design to create a system for sustainable food production has turned into a revolutionary design system modeled after the natural world's cycles and patterns. This model is like an ecological mosaic, central to which is the consideration of conservation, conservation of energy, labor, and resources, while increasing both yields and diversification of food production. This mosaic is a symbiotic relationship of people and place, a web of interconnected elements which enable life systems to endure and thrive, even in times of stress such as disease and natural disasters. Much like a spider's web, if one or more strands break, the web survives. This is broom, top flowering, Part that's used as the actual broom and then the leaf is good fodder and then the stick itself when it dries out they use for fire. You see it but there's a story about a shaman and a witch who had a little battle and they have a whole story around this little creases that show up in the leaf. So this plant here not only does it have uh, at least four different uses it also has even a, a mythology around it. So a pretty great plant. Rico seems to shapeshift into a modern-day Hanuman, who, as the legend goes, out of his great devotion for the divine, carried a mountain containing medicinal plants to those wounded in battle, thus healing them and saving the world from destruction. Traveling from village to village, Rico navigates these mythical Himalayan hamlets, holding perhaps both a radical and humble vision in his heart a vision of possibility for heaven on earth. Trying to break down paradigms, you know, and just sort of shake people up, you know, just sort of rock their world a little bit. Um, we have an opening here. Yeah. This region is a beautiful example of biodiversity and an excellent opportunity for incorporating a wide variety of sustainable systems, such as solar dryers, solar water heaters, and gray water systems. Systems that support the local culture's basic needs as well as the needs of the natural world. 
Like Hanuman's gift to those in need, Rico offers his knowledge of these systems as he gathers knowledge in return of how cultures like these can integrate modern technologies and be sustainable in harmony with the natural world. It's not so much like, I have the solutions. It's more of like, here's some tools. You know, let's break down the way we're thinking. Let's like, you know, break down our, our barriers, the fences on which we operate. Let's open it all up and here's some tools and let's just go find out what we can do. This road represents, in many ways, the challenges that are coming in with satellite TV, with cell phones, and one of the things really I'm hoping permaculture can offer to these people is how to integrate these new influences while still maintaining a vibrant culture and still holding on to the traditions and knowledge that really makes this community unique and rich. Rico and I leave the northern region on our journey south to the lower and drier climate, to Arissa, where we will visit one of his star students, Tiki. As we travel, I sense we are leaving heaven en route to a place called Earth. So we are at Sambav, which is out in the backwoods of Orissa, uh, and this is Tiki, and Tiki was one of my very star pupils last year up in Darjeeling when we did the course up there. Oh, it's a regular pilgrimage place I come every time I'm in India, and uh, that's where we're at, and we're taking a little tour. This is just here, you get just some amazing cropping going on right here. You have a mustard type right here going on, uh, maybe it's a radish, you have amaranth, you have more radish in the middle. I see some carrots, um, maize, spinach, uh, onions on the outside more. Just an amazing cropping out here. Very beautiful, very dense, very uh, effective use of space. Just beautiful. So you can... There's some in. water. Yeah. So you put so a pot and it has hole yes. beneath it. Yes. So it's like a drip system. Yes. And it keeps the, um, you know, the bottom part moist. Yes. That helps yes. a lot. And what do, what plants do, have you put on here? What plants are on here now? This is uh, radis. Yes. Then this is fenugreek. Uh, fertilizer means no chemical fertilizers, but compost, a lot of mulch materials. These are the fertilizers for us. Then vermicompost. Yeah. Not the chemical synthetic fertilizers. Because you know when you define fertilizer, one which fertilizes the soil is fertilizer. But chemical fertilizer actually doesn't fertilize the soil. <laughs> it kills the soil. Cannot be called a fertilizer. So this is our fertilizer plant. We have the normal composting down here, then we have the liquid manure, then vermicompost you need down there. And so what is in here? This is a um, mix, mixture of cow dung and cow urine, grain leaves, dry leaves and uh, straw. And, and what's the process? And we cover it with anthill soil, plaster it. With anthill soil? Yeah, anthill soil mixed with cow dung again ah. and plaster it. After two months we remove, two to three months. When you talk about agriculture or plantation, people get scared. Oh, it requires a lot of plowing, digging and very hard work like that. Yes. But this is so helpful. You don't need any plowing, you don't need any digging, any equipment. Just put mulch materials along with compost and grow something on it. Yeah, and, and this heap continues for one and a half year. And it, you told me last year that when you got this land, and how many species you told me, you, you counted how many species on the 100 acres that you have? Okay. When you there were seven species. Seven species of plants in yeah. 100 acres. Yeah. And now? Now we have more than 1,000. More than 1,000 species. Yeah. And definitely the soil has changed, at least where you've worked it. Yeah, otherwise all these plants uh, are not there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Heaven is for some a realm of the gods, and for others a place we go when we die to meet our long-lost relatives or loved ones. What if none of these traditional interpretations of heaven are correct? What if heaven is here and now, and a choice each of us can make? So this is a mango tree we're sitting underneath, and it's about to flower. And it's a tradition in this area to do a little puja. Here she's done a little offering and worship to the tree in preparation for its flowering. Um, it's just a sweet little recognition of our connection to earth and uh, just the blessings of the mango tree that it gives to us. Pretty cool. With that, with cow dung that's made into little bowls, and then you have, uh, they put fresh milk into it. And they do that on the full moon. Every full moon this happens. Purne. Can humans make such a shift in perception? And if so, how would they live? Permaculture is like a map to a buried treasure, containing a set of tools for designing and creating a more mindful and fulfilling life on Earth. One that views the Earth not as a resource to be used, but as the source of life lived harmoniously with all beings. With this map as a guide, maybe we the people can restore our planet and bring it back to life, not unlike the way Hanuman, with devotion in his heart, brought the Earth to the people and brought them back to life. What do I want? I want every child to be able to have a, you know, go to, go to sleep in a warm, dry bed with a, with a little food in its stomach, you know? And to me, that's not, that's not impossible. I mean, that's, that's totally possible. And I don't believe there will ever be a perfect world, and I don't know if I'd ever want to live in a perfect world, you know? I just want people to be able to have freedom and have a full tummy.